Okay, this section is about the resolution. It's about the resolving two images which form diffraction patterns on a screen. Here we have one image which is on the screen with this diffraction pattern. Here we have a smaller image there. Why will it have a smaller image? Well, remember the the uh, the, the, the angle between the centre of the central peak and the minimum is going to be the sine of that angle is equal to lambda over b. So what's happened here is that this is a very small angle, which means either the wavelength is very small or the aperture is very large. This uh, allows a very small image. So resolution, four hours. I will do this in 10 minutes. When we have two sources of waves, how far apart do they need to be in terms of an angle from, from, the, from, from the aperture from where they're observed for them to form two distinct patterns? If they're both in the same place, both objects in the same place, the images will completely overlap. So they cannot be uh, uh, separated, they can't be resolved. If they're a very wide angle apart, then they form two images on the back of uh, the retina, for example, or photographic paper. And so they can be resolved, but where is the limit where they can be resolved? Uh, so the point at which they start to overlap, but they're they're, distingu uh, they're indistinguishable. Where, where does this happen? So in other words, what angle do they form two distinct images? And we'll see that. So this is, the, from there to there, is theta. So the sine of theta is equal to lambda over b, if you remember. Now, we have different images here. Which ones can be distinguished? These two are far enough apart, the angle is wide enough that they can be distinguished. This one also. This one is at the limit. And it's basically when the first minima coincides with the maxima of the other image, the other diffraction image. Here, they will not be resolved because they will form one uh, blur, one continuous image here. So, reminder, that this is a um, uh, uh, an, an image of a, a diffraction uh, pattern here through a ripple tank. The waves are coming down here. Here we have the, the, the central fringe there, first minima there, and then the, fir the second maxima outside the, the central fringe there. Um, so when this coincides with the minima here with the next image, then they should be just be able to be resolved. So, what you have to do is sketch the variation of the diffraction uh, image in terms of the intensity at different points. So here we go. This is best illustrated on our smart board using the smart board software. But we have an image here. This is the first image, and this is the second image. You notice they're very close together. And if we do superposition, which means taking one the intensity of one image and adding it to the intensity of the other, the sum comes up like this. So what we see is the sum of this radiation, so we cannot distinguish these two images. Here, we've got one image is, is here, and the other image is here. When you do the sum of those, there, there's a slight difference here. The, image, the intensity goes down slightly, so the, you might just be able to resolve these two. This one is going to be a bit clearer. It will be fairly clear that this image is separate from this image, even though there will be some intensity in the middle between them. Uh, and the rule is basically this. If the peak, the central peak from one, coincides with the first minimum of the second image, then they will just be able to be resolved. Here, and you, and you can see that um, the, the sum of the two images there, uh, which is that intensity plus that intensity, there's a little bit of a dip there. So you would see one source which is bright, the next is bright, and it would be a bit dimmer in between. You can't actually see it on this there. Here we have, they're so close together that this central fringe coincides 
not with the first minimum, but it's closer than that. So these will not be distinguishable. In fact, if we look at the sum of the radiation, it will be uh, that we have a central peak. So there's no way you can resolve these two. So the interesting thing is, is to do this angle is to do with um, is 1.22 lambda over b. So this is for a circular aperture, 1.22 lambda over b. So at that, at that angle, that's when they should be just resolved. So how can we increase the angle by... Um, we, well, you want the angle to be as small as possible. So you want them to be uh, very close together. Uh, so you need to have a very short wavelength or a large, a large aperture to be able to get a better resolution. So with a circular aperture, it's 1.22 lambda over b. With a slit, which allows more radiation, it's going to be lambda over b. So when you have a large, ap large aperture, the angle will be very small, which means that you have two sources that are very close together will be resolved with a large aperture. So the significance of resolution on these devices. The shorter the wavelength, the closer together the objects can be and still be resolved or the larger the aperture, you increase the resolution. Um, and if you compare a DVD laser, which is 640 nanometers, that's the wavelength of the radiation, with a CD laser, which is 780 uh, nanometers, this has got a shorter wavelength. The shorter wavelength means that the resolution is going to, going to be better. So you can get more information um, on a DVD disc than you can on a CD. Radio telescopes compare the wavelength of light to wavelength of radio waves. We know that light is much shorter than radio waves. So we're, we're dealing with uh, a radiation which has a very long wavelength. So it makes it very difficult. You cannot use, you cannot resolve two images with a normal size telescope uh, because the angle lambda is so large for a radio wave that the, the objects will have to be very far apart. However, if you had a large aperture, then you can resolve them. For example, here we have a large uh, radio telescope. But there again, sometimes that is not, you want to have a better resolution than this. And how do we do that? Can we make this bigger? Well, you can make a bigger dish, or you can put many dishes together to make what's called a very large array. And this acts as one aperture, so you have a very large B, which means that you can actually have a, a much better resolution by having a large array of telescopes like this. Um, okay, a problem is find the minimum angle between two objects that can just be resolved by an eye. Um, so you need to find out what is the aperture of the eye. And how far away can two headlights be before they're just separated by the human eye? You have to figure out what is the distance between two headlights and how far away it can be away. So we have a problem for you to do. Pause. Another problem. Pause. You can try to do this problem. Try to answer that. And there we have it.